In May of this year, PCB Way very kindly invited me to Shenzhen to their factory to have a full tour of their two and multi-layer PCB factory as well as the assembly factory as well. It was an incredibly interesting experience. It was actually my first time visiting a PCB factory, so it was great to see the entire process, having designed quite a number of PCBs over the last couple of years. This video will show you parts of the PCB and assembly factory, hopefully giving you a good overview of the PCB fabrication process and what goes into creating these PCBs. If you'd like more detail on the whole process, PCBWay actually does have a set of their own videos which go into quite a lot of detail, as well as this pretty cool website which guides you through the entire process, and I'd strongly suggest you check this out, as it can actually help with your PCB designs, knowing what goes into it, into manufacturing a PCB, and what the limitations might be. I'm incredibly grateful to PCBWay, it was such an interesting experience, and I'd strongly suggest if you have the chance to visit a local PCB manufacturer, to really check that out. It really opened my eyes and it's incredible to see how much effort and engineering goes into fabricating and manufacturing PCBs. Make sure to check out PCBWay's services as well as to follow them on Instagram. Finally, before we get on to the main video, a huge thank you to my guides in Shenzhen, that's Elaine, Zoe and Luz, who very kindly accompanied me over a couple of days and showed me the factory and parts of Shenzhen. And also made me dress up in the clean room with suits that were far too small, but it was a great experience nonetheless. We start the PCB manufacturing process with this step one called pre-production engineering. Effectively, when you transmit your Gerber files, your manufacturing data to your manufacturer of choice, in this case PCBWay, they will examine these files, check for any basic errors and consistency in your files that everything is there, but also then adjust your supplied files to their specific tooling. So this could be for their imaging machines or their drilling machines and generate the necessary manufacturing files. We didn't explore this part of the factory in detail, so make sure to check out the link in the description below and check out this pre-engineering video if you'd like to know more. After this pre-production engineering step, we go on to board cutting. Our PCBs contain various copper files, pre-pregs, depending of course on the structure and how our layer count, but also copper clad laminates, or cores for short. Copper clad laminates, as the name suggests, are pre-bonded sheets where we have copper foil bonded to pre-preg copper files on either side. And these are prefabricated, but they come in these rather large sheets, would need to be cut down to standard dimensions. The operator takes a number of these copper clad laminates, these rather large sheets, as you can see, and prepares them in a parallel stack. Once these sheets have been stacked together, they are then moved over to a machine which does the cutting and cuts them down to size. The final size will then be a standard PCB panel size, which can fit in the remaining manufacturing machines, such as drilling, imaging, and so on. It'll also round down the corners of these panels as a final step before they move on to the next step in the PCB manufacturing process. If a multi-layer board is being produced, that is four or more layers, then you will have the next few steps. Step three, printing the inner layers, then etching, automatic optical inspection, as well as then layup and bond, repeated as many times as necessary to reduce the number of layers until you get to the outer layers. Because the processes are quite similar, I'll be showing you predominantly the methods for two layer boards. So we'll skip over step three, four, and five and continue with the layup and bond and then imaging the outer layers and moving on along this trajectory. This is because the inner layer printing process, etching the inner layers, and automatic optical inspection, effectively we will see very similar processes later on for outer layers. So keep in mind, steps three to six are used for multi-layer boards, so four and above. If we're doing two layer boards, we jump from board cutting, effectively straight to imaging the outer layers, because our copper clad laminate is effectively already our two layer board. We have copper top and copper bottom. So now let's go over to lay up and bond. Again, layup and bond is used if we have multi-layer PCBs, so four and above. Four and above layer PCBs are combinations of cores, so these copper clad laminates we saw before, pre prepregs and copper foils arranged in a certain fashion, depending on the design requirements and the PCB requirements. This image is quite a nice illustration where internally we might have a core, then some pre preg foils with a certain dielectric, certain weave and so on, copper files above and below. This might be a four layer board and of course we can just stack and stack and stack to get higher layer counts. These various layers will have to be bonded together by pressing, 
for multi-layer boards, of course, we have to have the inner layers, the inner copper layers etched already. And those were those steps we are omitting in this tour. So keep in mind for the inner layers, of course, you have to etch them before we can press them together. Definitely make sure to check out steps three to five. Again, link in the description below. What was really interesting for me to see for the first time were the actual raw prepregs. So these are these dielectric materials that sit effectively between copper layers as insulators. You will have heard of them of maybe 1080, 2116 and so on. And these are all these sheets lying around here, which are then stacked later on as we'll see. Now we're at the stacking part or the layout part where we're taking these cut down to size prepregs and these prefabricated cores, which form our inner layers that have been printed, etched, and then gone through automatic optical inspection. These are now placed together in the right order to form effectively the inner parts of the PCB. Alignment of the layers is then fixed via rivets and these rivet machines. After doing the layup, we then come to the copper foils, which are these incredibly thin sheets of copper, which will then be placed on the top and bottom of our PCB to form the top and bottom layers later on. These will then need to be pressed and laminated with this whole construction, which we'll see next. The next step is then to prepare for the pressing and lamination. So with these large metal sheets on which we place a copper foil, which is effectively the bottom or the top layer, and then we place several of these PCB panels as the inner layers. Once the inner layers have been placed, we then place another copper foil, again, either top or bottom copper, smooth out the copper on top, and then place another metal sheet on top and then repeat this cycle for a certain number. So we do quite a number of sets of PCBs in one pressing and lamination cycle and step. The assemblies are then moved on to the actual lamination step where we effectively heat up this stack to rather large temperatures and apply quite a lot of pressure. So we achieve lamination bonding between the individual layers. After this process, we then let these assemblies cool and then take out the individual laminated PCBs. After pressing and lamination, an operator will then use an X-ray machine to check alignment along the layers. We've now completed step six and we can move on to drilling the PCB, which is the seventh step in this process. Drilling the PCB happens, of course, once all of the layers are aligned and then later these can be plated to form vias or plated through holes or not to keep effectively non-plated through holes. Drilling is usually done in parallel by these rather large machines. And these were some of the most impressive machines I saw here. You can see all of these parallel drills and all of these drill bits and these automatically run through a program, choose the appropriate bit and then drill the hole rather precisely. And of course, this is mechanical drilling in these images. And of course, PCB Way also has laser drills for smaller holes or depth drilling, for example, for HDI boards. Now that we've drilled our holes, we still need connectivity between the layers in the PCB. To do that, we go to step eight, which is known as electroless copper deposition in this case, where effectively this is a chemical process, deposit a very thin layer of copper on the through hole walls. This is quite an impressive process and also these tanks are huge as we'll see right now. The first line we're looking at right now is the plated through hole line, which provides a very thin deposit of copper that covers the whole wall as well as the complete panel. This deposit is very, very thin and therefore we'll also see a secondary step after this.
here we have the drilled PCB panels, which will then be sent through all of these various steps in this electroless copper deposition process, where again, we're plating whole walls with a very thin layer of copper. This is a pretty impressive complex process, many different stages, automatic movement of these PCB panels through these various steps. After electroless copper deposition, we arrive at step nine, which is to image the outer layers. Now this step is very similar to, for example, printing the inner layers with some minor modifications. Effectively, when we want to image the outer layers, we want to create the artwork, the traces and copper features on the top and bottom layer of our PCB. This is done via a photosensitive film where we expose this to UV light and then etch parts away that we don't want. Finally, then removing the dry film, which then leaves the parts of the copper file that define our features, traces and so on. As you can already see from this image, this is performed in the lean room, which only has yellow light to make sure the photosensitive dry film doesn't react before it should. PCBWare uses LDI or laser direct imaging machines to apply and remove parts of this photoresist with a computer controlled laser based on your manufacturing data. This ensures very high precision features and is a very quick process as you can see here. The panels are treated and then we put in our previously drilled and electroless copper deposited PCB panels and the machine will effectively do the rest with minor operator intervention. And you can see the final panels with the photoresist image applied on top right here. All of this again happens in this clean room with yellow light and all panels are passed between other processing rooms through separate interfaces between them. The outer layer imaging step, as we just saw, removes the dry film where we want to keep copper traces and features and define the circuitry. This means this copper is effectively exposed, which then leads to the next step, which is step 10, plating. In the whole overall process, we can see we're now at step 10 with only a few more to go. The plating process effectively deposits additional copper and thus increases the final copper thickness on the outer layers. In addition, after plating, this step also adds tin to the exposed copper, which will then protect it in the next step, which will be etching. You can see the panels hanging there from our previous imaging step with a photoresist. And this is the huge machine that takes care of the plating process. And there are so many different steps. Effectively, these cranes and these robots move the panels between these various different baths and steps. Very intricate chemical process, but very interesting to see also firsthand. After plating, Having increased the copper thickness on the outer layers, as well as added a thin tin layer to protect it for the next step, which is step number 11, etching the outer layers. Etching the outer layers is a three-step process as written here. First, we have to remove the blue dry film from the imaging stage, then etch away the unwanted copper, effectively not our copper features and not our traces and so on. And again, the tin deposit prevents the wanted copper from being etched away. Finally, then we want to get rid of that tin on top. And this all happens in this etching step. We have our panels after plating going into this machine. And this is a very, very long machine with many different chemical processes and things going on. I'm not a chemist, so I have absolutely no idea what's happening in these tanks other than quite generally etching and the three steps we described previously. But at the end of this process, we get our panels out with just the copper that we want. Here you can also see a part of the waste that's been generated in this process. After this intricate process of etching the outer layers, we can move on to step 12, which is automatic optical inspection or AOI for short. 
I set it here and given the name, the outer images and edge panels are scanned by a machine and compared to the original design data to make sure it's free of errors, such as open circuits or any other defects. And here are these typical ALI machines. The operator loads in the etched panels and the machine automatically compares it with the manufacturing data to see if there might be any defects. If there are any defects, there are also other operators who will then pass it through a different machine which will highlight these defects. And quite interestingly, these operators will then aim to manually restore these defects. Now that our boards have been checked via AOI, Automatic Optical Inspection, we can move on to applying the solder mask, which is the typical for someone green, blue, red, black color you can choose at your preferred PCB manufacturer. So here are some examples of PCB away solder masks. We can have black, red, blue, green, and so on. And this is the step we're looking at now. The process of solder mask application is described on the PCB way website as well. The solder mask ink itself is applied across the whole PCB panel and then using overlays and UV light, they can expose certain areas to that light and thus remove solder mask from areas that shouldn't be covered, for example, certain pads and so forth. Again, this process is performed in a clean room in case there are any contaminants that could get underneath the surface, underneath the solder mask. Before we can apply solder mask, we need to treat the surfaces of our effectively exposed panels. Then we can apply solder mask and there are many different colors, of course, and many different methods of applying this. There isn't too much manual intervention with this particular machine, except flipping the panels themselves and aligning them and then actuating the machine. After application of the solder mask on both sides, these panels need to be dried. After drying, they are placed in a separate machine to check alignment and registration. As the solder mask ink is applied over the whole PCB surface, operators will need to use special artwork, which depends of course on the design files, which will then be exposed to UV light to eliminate solder mask from certain areas as we discussed beforehand. Now that we've completed the solder mask step, step 13, we can move over to surface finish. Surface finish, you're probably aware of a couple different options when you order PCBs. For example, a PCB where we can get hot air surface leveling, lead free, or electroless nickel immersion gold, various other options depending on our requirements. We'll look at the ENIG process next. As stated here, the surface finish is there to protect the surface of the raw copper, so to speak, and improve solderability, shelf life, and more, depending on which option you choose. Again, this is a pretty heavy chemical process. The Enig surface finish process requires several steps, various different pretty toxic chemicals, and again, it's a pretty impressive lengthy process. from the manufacturing data.
The step isn't listed here, but after surface finish, what we would typically look at is that of silkscreen. Silkscreen is, of course, entirely optional, depends on if you need it or not, but most PCBs will include silkscreen, and typically they might be used for component designators or indicating connectors and any text or information you want to put on top of a PCB. And this will be on top of the solder mask. In this case, it's white silkscreen on top of green solder mask. PCB manufacturers will typically give you a choice of what silk screen you might want to use where white is the most typical and cost effective, but for example PCB Way has several different options. Most PCB manufacturers will offer a few different types of silk screen. There might be manual screen printing, but what you're seeing here is direct legend printing, or DLP for short. It's pretty fast and accurate, done by a machine as you see here, and you can effectively think of this machine as an inkjet projector that's used together with acrylic ink, which is applied directly Up until now, the PCBs have all been in a panel. A panel will consist of many different smaller PCBs usually, which might even be from different customers to reduce cost. And at the end, they'll be effectively cut out, very simply speaking. And this is what happens in step 15, this profile step. There are various methods of cutting out PCBs from a panel. It could be scoring, routing, or punching out. PCB way, of course, can do multiple methods of depanelization. Here we're seeing a V-scoring machine where the operator is checking the groove depth, then readjusting the machine. And finally we'll see subsections of PCB panels which have been V-scored come out of the other side of the machine. Our PCB is now pretty much complete. The final steps after profiling is then doing an electrical test, and you might have heard of flying probe tests, as well as final inspections, and then packaging. Unless, of course, you're doing assembly as well, then your PCBs will be shipped to the assembly factory, which we'll also be looking at at the end of this video. An electrical test is an incredibly useful thing to do and should be done pretty much by any PCB house. There are various different methods of testing PCBs. Typically, this will be for connectivity, so providing a net list or for open circuits for shorts and so on. After this electrical testing has passed, there will be further manual verification through various operators who will scan through the PCBs and make sure they are approved according to their standards. This is then the final inspection step before either shipping or before assembly. Here are the flying probe testing machines for the electrical test. I'm afraid I can't show you too much detail as there are PCBs in these from customers, so I'm afraid I can't share that in too much detail, but these will do an electrical test, shorts, open circuits, and tests for continuity. PCBWay also offers systems for bed of nail testing, as you can see here, which is pretty cool to see in person as well. And here are some of the many bit of nail test fixtures, depending on the customer requirements. And here then is the final inspection, which is performed manually. In this case, for raw unassembled PCBs, just a final visual inspection according to PCB Ways guidelines. Again, after final inspection, we would then go to the packaging step, unless, of course, you have assembly. In this case, I actually was able to visit the assembly factory, which is also very interesting, and this is the next part of the video. Keep in mind, this is a pretty quick run-through of the PCB manufacturing process, and again, check out the link in the description below to learn in greater detail about each of these individual steps. PCBWay also has a page on the assembly process, which we'll be looking at in brief next. PCB Way can do many different types of assembly, predominantly, of course, SMD or SMT assembly, so surface mount devices, either single sided or double sided, but also, of course, through hole parts, that's either manually or via wave soldering. I'll show you some parts of the assembly factory and also in the order of this assembly process as we see here. Again, there's a link in the description below to go into far more detail. After your boards are manufactured and before the assembly process actually begins, engineers and operators at PCBWay will check your files, your bill of materials, your Gerbers, pick and place and so on to make sure everything is in order and they can proceed with this fairly automated assembly. So they'll do design for manufacturing checks, make sure the components, for example, fit the footprints and so on. 
There's also an incoming quality control. If you've ordered, for example, turnkey assembly, where they order the parts for you from various distributors, they will check what's come in actually matches what you wanted, check for any defects of the incoming material and so on. Here we have the PCB waste storage and incoming material inspection. So all the components from Mauser Digiski are ordered in bulk, combining various orders and then inspected here, and then also stored for the relevant orders, for example, in these compartments. Then there's also the quality control, so checking footprints, making sure all of the parts here, and that's what these operators are doing. After this incoming quality control, we can start with the actual surface mount assembly process before then moving to SMD and with all of the inspection steps along the way, as we'll see. First of all, we will use the manufacturing data we sent to the manufacturer, so for example, the pads file in your Gerber files, to create a stencil, so this will be laser etched, so we can align this on top of the PCB panel and then print the solder paste on top, and this was done automated. And then after that, we can place the components using pick and place machines, again, using the assembly data you sent to your manufacturer, so the pick and place files, centroid files, bill of materials, and so on, after which we can do reflow soldering for these SMD parts. You can also see this again in the link in the description below. First step is then machine programming and then solder paste printing after PCBWay has created the stencils. After solder paste printing, we come to component placement. This is where these pick and place machines are loaded with various individual reels. And these reels are these component reels you will have probably seen before, which contain loads and loads of the individual components. This be passives, connectors, many types of SMD parts which then get automatically placed by these pick and place machines, again, using the assembly data you provided to your PCB manufacturer and assembler. After the solder paste has been applied, there will be some automatic optical inspection steps. And then also after the components have been placed, there's also an automatic optical inspection step before we then get to the reflow soldering process. This is the fridge where they store the solder paste and right next to it are all of the stencils they will use for the assembly line which have been prefabricated. Here's the solder paste printing machine where you can load the stencil on the PCB panels. And also the automatic optical inspection of the solder paste. Then we get to the pick and place reels which are loaded by this operator. and we get these various sets of reels which can then be used for the pick and place machines. So after the solder paste printing, this is automatically shipped over, so to speak, to the pick and place machines you see here. The pick and place machines will show warnings and errors in case some faults happen. But this is a pretty cool automatic process of placing the parts on the solder paste. After printing the solder paste, placing components, doing various optical inspection steps, we then come to the reflow soldering part for these SMD components. The reflow oven is this very large device we'll see in just a second, where the PCBs are passed in at one end and come out the other and undergo a soldering process, which is based on a specific temperature profile, which depends on the type of solder paste, depends on the components and so forth. This is a pretty impressive machine as we'll see. After the reflow soldering process, so once we've simply speaking attached the SMD components to the board, we go through various optical inspection methods. This could be automated, but also manual ones such as x-ray and further manual inspection, as we'll see. And here's this reflow oven. We feed in the PCBs with a solder paste and components on them. Then they are fed through this machine, go through various temperature profiles, and then come out soldered on the other end. After these PCBs have then been soldered by this reflow process, we have an automatic optical inspection machine, which highlights potential defects that an operator might be able to fix. Then PCBWay also has an x-ray machine for inspecting, for example, QFN solder joints or BGA solder joints, as well as then also a manual inspection step after the first assembly process. PCBWay, of course, offers through-hole assembly as well, and this is typically performed after the SMT process. This is either done manually, just with a soldering iron, but PCBWay can also do wave soldering, and we'll see the wave soldering machines in this video as well. 
After this through hole assembly process, we could, for example, add in some conformal coating if the customer requires this. Then there'd be a final inspection, as well as washing and drying the boards, which then finally leads to packing and shipping, and then off to the customer. Here we have a wave soldering machine, which is pretty cool. If you look on the side of it, you can see this wave of hot solder soldering the bottom side of these through hole components. Then we also have the line where through hole components are placed onto the PCB before soldering. Then of course manual soldering, which is just done as typical with a soldering iron, and also clipping the leads after soldering and assembly. We finally arrive at the vacuum packaging section, if for example if you have a number of unpopulated PCBs. As well as for assembled PCBs, they will all have their own ESD safe packaging. And the PCB way boxes you're probably familiar with. And this is the actual PCB I picked up during my time in Shenzhen, which was the Xerxes board we've seen previously on the channel. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was interesting and I hope it gave you a brief insight into the PCB way factory and how PCBs are manufactured and assembled as quite a quick run through. A huge thank you again to PCBWay for inviting me to visit their factory and I look forward to working with them throughout the next year. If you liked the video please leave a like, a comment if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with any new hardware design videos. Thanks again and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.